Hey there, REM PCs. Welcome to Rules of Cool, where we interview very special guests, creators, gamers, designers, and world builders. I'm your host, Rem, and today we're going to chat with our friend Eric from Norse Foundry. And then stay tuned because up next at 5 p.m. PDT is an all new one shot show episode featuring the RPG tragic horror 10 Candles. This week's giveaway is a Gnomish Copper Norse Foundry dice set, and they are gorgeous. Type hashtag RemPC in the chat right now for your free entry to win. For bonus entries, check out www.remalternus.com slash nuyen or www.patreon.com slash remalternus. Your support helps pay our cast and crew, so we greatly appreciate it. Now, Time to get right into our conversation for this week. So stay tuned, REM PCs. Welcome back to the show. Uh, this is Rules of Cool, and I'm here and very excited to talk with Eric from Norse Foundry Dice. How are you doing, Eric? Good. How are you? Good. It's good to have you here. Why don't we start with a little bit? Just tell us about who you are and what you do. Well, I'm Eric, uh, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I do a little bit of everything at Norse Foundry. I mean, my main job is I'm a special education teacher. So I've been doing that for 26 years. Um, <clears throat> I've been with Norse for seven years now, I think. Um, but technically, I've been with it longer because I've been friends with the owner for 15 years. So <clears throat> um, at Norse, let's see, I'm the weekend packing person. Um, I'm the stream and podcast liaison support contact person. Um used to be the warehouse manager. Uh, then it got too big. So he hired somebody else because I couldn't do it full time. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just generally the person who does whatever needs to be done. If there's nobody else around to do it. Oh, I'm also the convention manager for uh, convention I, stuff. I, I know that's the first time I saw you when, when, you know, you look up from the beautiful dice sets at, <laughs> at convention center, you look up and there's Eric. Uh, ready to help you find the perfect set for you. <laughs> so what's your history as a gamer? How did you get into this world? Oh, God. Um, I have to thank my uh, Aunt Sally and Uncle Bill in 1979 when they <laughs> sent me the original Monster Manual, first edition ad and &D. It was oh. the first book I ever got, and it was all downhill from there. It's just been <laughs> all downhill from there. So it started with the monsters, huh? Yeah, I, and it's weird is because I really don't think I don't. Well, of course, it's forever ago, but I don't ever remember showing any interest in anything like that, really, outside of comic books. But they got it. And I was like, this is like the coolest thing ever. And <clears throat> I uh, made my mom drive me to the nearest town because we lived in a little town in the middle of nowhere in Michigan. Um, made her drive me to Cadillac, Michigan, to the comic book store so I could start picking up all the books and everything. So that's awesome. And and so was D and D. If D and D was your first love, um, where did it lead from there? What other games did you get into as your your gamerness grew? Oh God, what have I not played? Um, <laughs> uh, we played the uh, West End games, Star Wars, for a while. Uh, that was the the, the D six system. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, D and D, um, second edition D and D, a little bit of third edition, fourth edition, some fifth edition. Um, I uh, remember seeing the original. I think it was the original Elmore Shadowrun book at the mall, and I, I picked that up. I think I still have it on the shelf somewhere. I know I have oh, the, the second edition one. Um, what? <clears throat> let's see. What? Have, uh, Call of Cthulhu. Um, Lots of the, the fate system. Um, geez, I can just look around and oh, shh. hey, hey, 
cat. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, and what ha- what haven't I played? I mean, cool. Dead so got- Lands. Hey. So you've gotten to really expand into um, into a ton of different games. Um, I, and I know, like we we got connected because of, of streaming and our community. So, so what games, um, what are you watching now on podcasts and live streams that, that has your attention these days? Um, well, I, I would like, like I was talking to you earlier, um, the glass cannon podcasts. I mean, they're my buddies. They stream, um, Delta green on Tuesday nights, which is a modern call of Cthulhu type game. If you don't cool. know what it is. And then they do a call of Cthulhu on Friday nights, but, Hey, <laughs> someone wants to share the limelight. <laughs> there's, there, yeah, there's a cat in the yard. Like cats. Um, <clears throat> but they were a uh, big Pathfinder one. That's where they got their, their start. So, but cool. um, outside of that, I've been watching um, uh, the One Ring Second Edition on uh, uh, the Adventures in Lollyganging. Uh, cool. And Jeff is a great. He, he's a great storyteller. And then. My my new um, indulgence, which I don't even know why, is um, I've been watching. Well, actually, it started uh, proficiency bonus on Twitch and uh, YouTube. I was just looking for a fantasy flight game, Star Wars stream to watch. Oh, cool! And I was watching that, and then, and I'm almost embarrassed to say it, but uh, they're doing the the new Power Rangers RPG, <laughs> and I've been watching that. And it's, I mean, it's pretty entertaining, so. No shame. We're recording yeah, a, a Power Rangers series for podcast right now. <laughs> oh, good. I mean, because, yeah. I mean, I got the book and it's like, it's it's a great book. Um, it, it's, it looks really nice. Uh, I haven't read a whole lot of it yet, but but it looks fun. And I'm going to see if I can uh, talk the uh, D&D Pathfinder guys into uh, doing a Power Rangers one shot or something one night. That's awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> So you mentioned you got into Norse Foundry because you knew the owner. Um, so, so was is there is there a friendship story blossoming into watching Norse Foundry become a thing in the community? <laughs> well, so I met them because um, I'd moved away and I'd moved back, and my old gaming group had kind of moved apart, and so I went down to uh, the this one with my buddy and then we found um 2d10 which isn't around anymore and that's where i met uh my buddy cleon and this is when fourth edition was first coming out Mm -hmm. and so they were doing living forgotten realms on sunday so i showed up and so since that has come out we've basically had the same group ever since then so that's was 15 16 years ago (laughs) <laughs> oh wow yeah so if we basically had the same core four or five people for the past 16 years so that's that's life goals you know <laughs> the, the, the keeping a group together for that long <laughs> yeah but norse foundry we were actually talking about it today i was like how did it start because i don't remember and drew turns to cleon because he's in town visiting and he's like ask cleon and i'm like well how did him he goes because he owned the store at the time before they shut down and he was like you guys were in the store and I was looking for metal dice. And I said, I'm really looking for somebody who'll do metal dice. And Drew said, let me look into it. And next thing you know, he's selling us uh, uh, the, the metal dice. So it just kind of <laughs> just kind of took off from there. I mean, it, it went from uh, the storefront being the spare room in his house and sitting around the table, putting stuff in packaging at his table to now we've got a warehouse and have to hire people to, to take on full-time yeah. jobs that you can't uh, <laughs> yeah. do by yourself. That's, that's, that's a, a, a cool place to be. Yeah. yeah um, it's, 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 it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> how many, how many conventions does Norse Foundry go to every year? Oh, a bunch. Let's see. Um, PAX East, PAX Unplugged. Um, can't even think of the other paxes <laughs> uh, pax uh, pax west but i don't go to that one that's why i don't think of it um okay. they're doing they're doing emerald city comic-con cool um <clears throat> the other guys just did denver comic-con 
Um, I just got back from Dice Tower Con East. Um, Origins, as you know, because I saw you there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, of course, Gen Con. Uh huh. Did I already say that one? I don't even know. Um, no, you didn't. <laughs> um, we were supposed to be doing Tampa Comic Con, but something happened, so we couldn't do that one. Okay, but I'll include it if you usually do it. Uh, so this was going to be our first one, so it's like it was something happened okay. with the person who's supposed to do it. Uh, we've done MegaCon in Orlando. Um, so yeah, we, I mean, there's a bunch, there's, uh, um, Adepticon, Gary Con. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, there's a bunch. I'm, I'm sure I'm leaving some out because that's, that's 11 <laughs> that we hit already. I that's, can't this, that's this year. Yeah. That's just wow. this year since, since last, what was it? December? No. When was origins last year? September? Uh, September. December. Yeah. Yeah. So since then we've done 12 cause we did origins twice. So, so that's a, uh, that's a con a month at least. Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Um, and do you go to all the cons or, um, as, as con no, so, manager? So we have our East and West. Okay. So like for the West coast, there's people on the West coast that we use to, to do those. And our retail person lives in Seattle. Oh, so okay. he usually handles all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> I personally, I've only done this year's origins. Uh, the Paxes, Gen Con. Oh, I forgot uh, Dragon Con, of course. Dragon Con. I forget Dragon Con. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, like the local little ones are the ones that I pack the car up and drive everything up and do that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, so in your entire <laughs> career, how many conventions would you guess you've been to? Oh my God. <laughs> Um, 12 times seven. <laughs> um, let's in my, my entire life. Uh, let's see. The first one was in 1992 is a little one in Tampa. That's where uh, we got to play shadow run and did the shadow run uh, LARP Neat. by, ac oh, by nice. accident. We did it by accident. We got <laughs> caught in the, in the uh, elevator with people doing it. And we just went along with it. And, That's uh, amazing. I love <laughs> yeah, those stories. We just, we they only have it at cons. <laughs> And it's only because my buddy Chuck um, at the time had like uh, black hair with a mullet and he was wearing like a leather duster and had uh, like Terminator sunglasses on because that's what he wore at the time. And I don't know why. <laughs> and people walked in and they started talking to him like he was in on it or something. And we just went along with him. And <laughs> um, awesome. But how many have I done? Uh, probably at least 20. Wow. Yeah. Neat. Yeah, it's a it's a blast. What are what are your favorite cons every year to go to? What do you look forward to most? Uh, well, I always look forward to Gen Con because I like the yeah. energy. I mean, yeah. the energy is great. Um, <clears throat> it's it's a hard con to work. I mean, it's nonstop, but uh, it's it's a fun one, and that's where I get. Well, and of course, I get to meet all my uh, other industry buddies that show up to them, like from Paizo, from Wizards, from well, I, I met Rick from Chaosium, the president at Origins. Cool. So I'm gonna hook up with him Neat. um <clears throat> it just that's that's my favorite because everybody's there yeah. um i think in general my favorite favorite one to do though is origins because it's busy but it's laid back if yeah. that makes any sense it's just yeah. got that that easy going that easy going vibe that's 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 my feeling too. I, I think origins is my favorite because it's still <coughs> massive, like not as big as Gen Con, but still massive, but more intimate, like the, the conversations and the relationships and stuff like that. They, there seems to be more time for that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we, I mean, we try to do that at all of them. I mean, we try to make time to talk to everybody who comes along if, if that's what they're looking to do, if they're just looking, I want dice and go. Okay. Well, that's fine. But, but, you know, we try to talk and interact and, that's yeah. awesome. I like that. Uh, so, so I want to talk a little bit more about uh, about dice, and and if you can't make it to a convention as well, uh, they have a really great website um, where you can you can see all of this. But what are the different types of dice you can get? Um, we have our alloy, which is a zinc copper alloy. Um, we have all of our different sh colors of aluminum. 6063 aircraft grade aluminum if anybody really wants to know um 
Uh, we have wood dice. Uh, I don't even know the types of woods because I, I really don't know them. Uh, we do have ceramic dice. Um, we have like 169 different types of gemstone and glass dice. Uh, we 169 have 169 types. Yeah, and I think there's more now because I think wow. more, some more different ones came in today. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, we have like our our true metal dice, um, copper, brass, bronze, um, Damascus steel, titanium. Uh, everybody's favorite to play with is the tungsten because it's super heavy and super dense. <laughs> um, what else do we have dice wise? We got there's so many things. It's I, I can't even remember all of them. Uh, so so. Speaking of the copper dice, we have a set that uh, that that you donated today uh, for a giveaway, and I think they're right here over my shoulder. Uh, so these are the gnomish copper dice. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Uh, that's one of the um, OG dice, actually. That's one of the original uh, designs that came up when Drew first started the company. It's the uh, it's the it's the zinc copper alloy. Um, oh, okay. The whole set weighs about half a pound. Nice. Um, I have a set similar to them that I got when he first started the company and they look exactly now like they did back then. So I mean, <laughs> they're, they're durable. <laughs> um, and yeah, make sure you don't roll them on your wood table or your glass table because use a, use a tray, use a pad, use a mat. <laughs> That's what those, <laughs> because, those leather uh, dice trays are for. <laughs> yeah, because because my my wood table that I have now has nice little tracks across it from when oh. we were gaming at my house before we even thought of using trays or anything from people <laughs> from from always rolling our dice on them. So so yeah, so, there's there's some war stories on my table. <laughs> so, so you have the opportunity, anyone who's watching the show today, uh, to win these this set of dice uh, of the gnomish copper. And you do that for free by typing in hashtag RemPC into the chat uh, at any time during our show and our game to follow. And, and we'll get those sent out to you, which is really exciting. So um, thank you again for, for doing that. And, oh, no problem. Uh, yeah. And, and what would you say are like the most popular dice set or sets if you can't choose between? So right now the most popular dice that well just i'm just going for what i've seen at conventions because i i don't see the sales from day to day sure. um <clears throat> is the um frosted zircon uh canine not, not, not zircon i'm sorry frosted canine uh dice which are a the canine glass which is uh crown nine it's it's a reflective prismatic glass i think that's that, the one i like a lot it's the one that looks like it glows yeah. 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 So that's, that's been like the super popular one since uh, we've, we've gone back on the road. They're so pretty. I love the, the, the glass uh, ones as well, but the frosted glass, those, those get my attention every time. Uh, every time I walk past the booth. Yeah. My uh, buddy Skid calls them the Arkenstone set because they look like they're glowing just from the light around that's them. So true. yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> now, I, now I love them even more. <laughs> uh but you, so in addition to dice and, and all the various gemstones you have, um, which are cool as heck too, um, you sell some, some different items as well besides dice uh, that I've seen at the table. Can you tell us a little bit about those? So we have like this full selection. I think there's 16 different sets of like uh, coins. Like we have mm. a different series. We have our elf coins, our dwarf, dwarf coins, our Norse coins, of course. Um, pirates uh we have cthulhu coins it's just things to use at the table uh we have our dice trays we have foldable ones we have which are the, we call the tray of folding the, that's the coming up with the names is probably the best part uh we have the the trays of holding which are the the more solid octagonal with the ring on the inside and outside for dice storage or i, I always tell everybody if your dice aren't working you put them in jail um <laughs> we have our uh, dice containers with um, the chest of holding, which holds a, a standard seven set. Um, God, we've got so many things. It's <laughs> uh, we've got our uh, we call them our class coins, which are based off of the D and D and Pathfinder uh, classes, where 
It's, I think, a 55 millimeter coin where it's got artwork on both sides and one side is enameled and the other isn't. So people are like, what do you use it for? I'm like, it's a 50, 50, um, depending on what game you're playing, uh, hero point, no hero point inspiration, no inspiration, just depending on what system you're playing. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I've seen as well, <laughs> you've got some of the dice holders, like the little book, uh, the leather and wood book. Yep. Oh, yeah. We get those from, uh, well, I don't, yeah. Uh, yeah. We get them from Elderwood Academy. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our buddies over at Elderwood. So you can Jeez. always check them out if you want any uh, wood stuff made. They, they do some good work. That's really cool too. Uh, we also have whiskey stones. If you want D6 or D20 whiskey stones. Nice. Just, yeah. I mean. <laughs> so see, I, I know we've got whiskey drinkers in the audience. So uh, uh We've got uh, our Scotch Squad uh, buddies that would definitely be into that. <laughs> um, so what is the process for designing or crafting new dice of each variety? Like, how do you come up with 160 different ideas for gemstone dice? Um, this is where I'm supposed to say NDA. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's just basically um, we'll sit around and uh, he'll be like, what colors do you think we should do? You know, and so we'll come up with colors and then we'll look and see what kind of gemstones are available, um, what kind of uh, glass uh, dice are available that we can get. Um, he'll come up with uh, different themes for dice like we have. We currently have our space dice, which are a space themed. So mm -hmm. they've all got like a outer space sci fi looking uh, theme to them. Then we've got our dungeon delve, um, which are enameled but the background is supposed to be a dungeon tile floor and it's oh, got cool. skulls in all the corners so it's just i mean it's just a lot of sitting around and i, I get honestly drew comes up with most of it i just i come up with the names he comes up with the <laughs> well and the detail like the the dungeon tile and the the bones and like to to get all those varieties that's a, that's super cool um so i i know that i i know your answer to this already but uh <laughs> uh what what kickstarters has north Country <laughs> done and are there any new ones coming up soon um which ones have we done that's the uh we've done officially we've done seven okay um there's some we've been associated with like so we just our last one we just finished with our space dice mm -hmm. um we did one where it was the dice of crits where it was um I think it's a 35 millimeter D20. It either has all ones or all twenties. <laughs> uh, <I like it. laughs> um, uh, way back when we put out a book called Legacy of Mana. I don't ever know whatever happened with that. <laughs> um, uh, we did cartography with uh, Brian. Oh, what's Brian's last name now? Brian Collins. Okay. He's over with, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of the place now. I'm drawing a complete blank. Um, we have our line of minis of our, uh, compatible minis that we've done. Uh, there's like five waves of those that have been kickstarted. Neat. Uh, we, of course he kickstarted the, um, wondrous dice originally, which is the, uh, multicolored aluminum dice. Mm -hmm. Um, he kickstarted the gemstones originally. Um, <clears throat> and then. We have one coming up that I'm not allowed to talk about, <laughs> except that I can say that anyone who enjoys pink mohawk type things will enjoy the colors and the artwork on it. I'm so <laughs> excited now. But I, I can't so, actually say anything more than that, but <clears throat> we, I was, so I was should, cleared to say that. So we, we should follow the, the, what the Facebook page, Twitter, stuff like that to, to find out when we're allowed to know more. Probably. Yeah. Cause well, cause I get it differently, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I know it'll be on the, it'll be, it'll be on the Instagram. Okay. Um, probably the Facebook page, uh, Twitter. And if you, uh, get the newsletter, it, um, it's emails sent out about that too. So awesome. And if you're Beautiful. a previous Kickstarter backer, you'll already get them. So, right. Right. Okay, cool. Uh, well, that's really exciting to, to know something's coming up. I, I know here at, at, uh, roll with Rem Alternus where we play Emerald glitch, we hate pink Mohawk here. 
<laughs> so that's really exciting. Um, so, so what we kind of talked about other items that were available and stuff. One of the things that I thought of while you were talking that I wanted to touch on is your nicked table. Uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't, can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the video you guys did showing the durability of Norse Foundry <laughs> dice? <laughs> Oh, I wish I could find it because you wanted to see. I wish I could find it. It was um, <laughs> because we get all these emails about um, something happened to the gemstone dice. Like we got one that was like, I accidentally dropped my hammer on it. Oh. Okay. As you accidentally dropped your hammer on it. Sure. Um, I accidentally backed over it with my car. And, and these are, these are real emails that, you know, we've gotten. Um it fell off my table, out the door, down three flights of stairs and hit the concrete. So we were sitting around talking about, you know, because, you know, we're always like, send us a picture, you know, we'll, you know, we'll evaluate. And so then um, <clears throat> I forget who it was. Somebody got an idea of let's make a video of how to take care of the, the dice. <laughs> and so it was like, do this, do this. But everything that uh, we were saying, like, roll it on a tray. So instead of rolling on a tray, somebody like threw threw it against the wall <laughs> or um uh don't roll them together because you know they're, they're natural substances you don't want them clinking together so he takes a big handful and he's shaking them you know and, and or don't put them with metal dice so then he's got he's dropping like we have our boulders which are the 55 or 45 or 55 millimeter big old chunks of metal and dropping them on there and you know watching them break in half and so it was just like this is we're telling you what to do, but showing you what not to do. How, so, how many dice were <clears throat> injured in the making of this video? <laughs> oh, I have no idea. <laughs> Too many. It, it, I mean, it, it was luckily uh, we get when we get them in, we have to check them to make sure there's nothing wrong with them. So we always get a bunch that are there's something wrong with them. So we could we were like, let's just get rid of these guys. And do you ever get requests for since <clears throat> since dealing with gemstones of of like custom like engagement dice and things like that? Uh, actually, uh, we do because we, we we also do custom dice. Um, oh, okay. But <clears throat> somebody I I want to say it was Ben. Um, they were they were having a baby. They were pregnant, and so on our fifty five millimeter uh, boulders, it was it was our Miami dice one because it's blue and pink. So, and it was like a reveal type thing. And I don't Aww. know how they were doing it, but instead of the 20, it was, we're pregnant. And they okay. ordered a bunch of them to send to like their family and st stuff. So they would know. And we actually had, it was, what was it? At, uh, in Boston, somebody came up and bought a set of amethyst dice and uh, used it in their proposal to their, to his girlfriend to get married oh that's neat and then we saw him again the next year and he was like she said yes so we oh, like, well, that's awesome that's 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 the happy ending to the yeah. story <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome yeah it's cool that that i i know you showed me as well some other custom dice for some um uh companies shows podcasts things like that that uh and that's really neat that you guys have that available um for for your partners as well yeah. That, and that's one of the things is like, that's one of my main things is making sure that, you know, that stuff gets taken care of, um, making sure they're happy, but that's always, that's always my favorite part is now you guys get to pick your dice. So <laughs> pick out your dice and yeah. You know, that's, that's the best part. Yeah. But how do you, and, and how do you choose, right? Like it's, <clears throat> it's, it's hard when you've got 160 varieties of just gemstones. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, when I say now go to the aluminum section and pick out whichever one you want. But I need it by tomorrow. So <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> well, um, I, don't do, I, I don't do that. How many aluminum sets do you guys uh do you carry? Oh my god. Like a hundred. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cause it's because all the different color combinations and mm -hmm. yeah, that's so so for for all of the the displays, all of the different varieties that you bring to conventions with you, um, anyone from our audience who's making it to Gen Con this year, where can they find you? Um, we'll have two booths. Um, I would tell you we've got one in the 2400s. I don't really know that one because I'm not there, but 
five fifty uh five forty three is where we'll be. Okay. So that's where Jeez. that's where my booth will be. So so again, if you want to look at all the pretty dice and then look up and find Eric ready to talk with you, that's where you uh <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm the I'm the guy with the long blonde hair that'll be there. So it's <laughs> It's memorable though, because before <laughs> I even started talking to you, I knew your face because like I associate that hair with Norse foundry. <laughs> <laughs> it, awesome. that, I, I, I gotta tell you, origins was weird because usually it's just the badges for the, for us to say Norse foundry or whatever. And I didn't realize my name was on it. Oh, so when people will come up and go, Hey Eric. And I'm like, how do you know my name? <laughs> or are you Eric that glass cannon talks about all the time? How do you know Aww. who I am? But yes, yes, I am. Oh, that's so nice though. Look, you, you, you've got Norse Foundry fame. Yeah. <laughs> so what is your favorite dice set? My favorite dice sets. <clears throat> um, I would have to go with, because I'm kind of torn because there's reasons for both, but my favorite one is our aluminum dice or wondrous dice, the cotton candy, just because oh. of all the, because I have ADD. And so, <laughs> and so when my medicine wears off, I just sit there and I spin the dice and I watch all the colors spin together. And, oh, and, then, they're, then, and then they yell at me because I'm running the game. And, <laughs> yeah. So um, my second favorite would be our pure copper dice because you can make it patina. Uh. So, you can, so you can either keep it shiny silver or shiny silver and copper to shiny copper. Oh, or you neat. can let it uh, like tarnish and it'll turn green and, and teal. and. Oh, wow. Cool. So, so you can get two sets and keep one very shiny <laughs> copper and have one go uh, yeah. into that. It's like, it's like two and one. Yeah. <laughs> neat. Um, and one of the things I want to talk to you about, we did kind of touch on like what you're watching now in terms of podcasts and streams and stuff like that. Um, but what are, what are your all time podcast and live stream recommendations? Like who puts on the best shows, um, or the best games and, and what should our audience get into? Um, uh, I, again, my, the first one I come back to, cause it's the one it, it's the glass cannon podcast. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the one that hooked me the most. Um, God, what, what am I listening to? I have so <laughs> many of them. Um, I, I'll, I'll say, uh, I'll give a shout out to Opti, Opti with, uh, Shadowrun Origins. That's, that's on my list. Um, Shadowrun Origins. I'm about to join the cast. Are you allowed to say that? Yeah, I'm allowed to say oh, okay. that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's going to happen. Like, I, I don't know a while before the, the current episodes are released, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so if, if you like, um, Starfinder from Paizo, um, Southern Tom Foolery. Adam and the gang, they do a great job. Cool. Um, because a lot of them are, are, are partner people. Um, Find the Path podcast, um, Cosmic Crit, uh, Min Maxed. Um, there's one that I found called Party Business Podcast, which is a uh, one ring second edition Ooh, cool. podcast. Um, oh, look, the Neo Anarchist podcast. Go listen That's to that. That's another Opti one. <laughs> We, I, I actually have some some cool news about that. Uh, we are actually relaunching Neo Anarchist podcast under our YouTube channel, uh, and it's going to be as uh, uh, recorded content. So you'll actually have video content with Neo Anarchist podcast. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, what else do I listen to? Golly, there's so many. <laughs> but yeah, those those are probably the ones that I. I, those are the ones my my can't miss weekly cool are those that, yeah it's it's helpful because uh i mean i have ulterior motives i'm asking you this so that i can watch the recording later and and like <laughs> catch up on all these and and favor them and follow them and and uh you know build some partnerships there as well but well i'll tell you glass cannon if you're going to listen to it it's uh, a seven-year journey Wow. Yeah, they did an entire Pazo, Paizo, Pazo, Paizo uh, adventure path from book one to book six. Wow. It took them seven years, 326 episodes. And they're each, what, four hours? No, each one is an hour. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's... an hour, hour. Yeah. Well, that some of them, bad. some of them are longer. Like the last, 
the last one was split into three pieces and I think it was almost seven hours long. Oh, wow. The very last one. Yeah. Okay. So, um, lots of content to catch up on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and research <laughs> and, and find places to go. That's, that's part of why, why we did episodicals. Cause I have a short attention span. So I like, like a, a commitment of 20 episodes is something that I can like get on board <laughs> with more than like, I, I, I just can't catch up on critical role because as much as I want to, and everything in me knows that I will love it. I'm like afraid of that kind of commitment. <laughs> I, I just can't pay attention to a screen for that long. I, I really can't. It's four hours for me to dedicate four hours of sitting down and doing nothing but watching something. I, I just, I it's can't. like a movie every every week, it, longer than a movie. It's two movies every week. Yeah, yeah. And I have trouble sitting through a movie, so. <laughs> fair, fair. Well, oh, awesome. there is, oh, there is another, um, what was it? My buddy, Matt, uh, I think it's called Pink Mohawk. I actually think it's, or Pink Fohawk. Pink Fohawk is what it is. Oh, cool. It's a Shadowrun second edition where it's the, the Pink Mohawk era. So Awesome. Yeah, it was, it's it's more of a comedy one, but oh it's, neat! It's, it, it's not bad. Awesome. Uh, so so I want to kind of switch over to role playing games uh, that you've played. Uh, we all have like our favorite <laughs> RP moment that happened in a game, some game system somewhere. What is what is your favorite story to share? Oh God. Um, <clears throat> we have talk- time, so you can share more. Oh, than I say one. I say we're talking <laughs> about that today. Um, uh, the one that I always think back to, though, is um, my little group of my second edition game where we were. A th- I was a thief cleric. We had a wizard something and then uh, somebody was a drow something. Ooh. And we were walking up to a town and we're trying to negotiate to get in. And they're like, we don't allow drow in here okay, whatever. We're just trying to get through blah, 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 blah. And, and then, so we're starting back away. And, and my buddy, Chris, who's playing the drow just keeps talking to him. And they're like, we're going to give you the count of five and then we're going to open fire. And he just keeps talking. So then, you know, my buddy Vince is the DM starts count five, one, two, three, four. And then he, he stays there. So they light him up like a pin, like, like a pin cushion. And it was so, and he dies because we were low. Well, the second edition and you don't live very long in second. Yeah. Edition. And so uh, me and my buddy Chuck's characters move up and they're like, we're going to open fire. Like, no, 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 no. We're just here for the body. (laughs) We're leaving. We're just going to get the body. We're leaving. Um, So there was that one. Um, (laughs) We had the running. It's been going on since late third edition, all the way through fourth edition into fifth edition. And now into Pathfinder two is Kayla's bread shop. It's just a bread shop that we always find in every single town and somehow it, it always burns down and nobody, nobody ever knows how, but it always burns down. It's like the cabbages guy from Avatar. <laughs> yeah. It's just, that's, it's just some running gag that we came up with. Awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, there was uh, the trap finders in fourth edition. It was my buddy, Mike's uh, dwarven paladin and my human sword mage who we didn't have anybody to find traps. So we would just walk straight forward. And we would find every trap because we would just walk into them. So, so yeah, it's just just little things like that. I mean, in doubt, trial and error. Yep. Yeah, when in doubt, send the dwarf. You know, it it kind of reminds me too of uh, one of as as a content creator, one of my early ideas that I've never gotten to put in uh, to effect yet um, was having a show where, like, at the end, we could do a segment of character obituaries so like (laughs) honor your character if you had a character that died and you want to share their story what would you write about them in their obituary uh and we'll read them online uh live um and i'd still love to do that someday because people just love telling those stories and i think you'd get some truly epic death scenes that you could oh yeah oh yeah 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 (laughs) or no doubt or you just couldn't stop talking to the guards and they lit you up. <laughs> Chris died because he wouldn't shut up. <laughs> Pretty much how it went. I love that. <laughs> and what would your epitaph be? Uh, uh, died because he wouldn't shut up. <laughs> yep, yep. Wouldn't shut up. I love it. Oh, awesome. Uh, 
so what are your top game systems to play? We've kind of talked about your, um, the podcast you're following and stuff. So, <laughs> and, and your journey through playing all of these games, if you could have any game with any cast of, of, of players, um, what would it be? Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's a tough question. Um, man, there's so many. I mean, if any cast of players, yeah, man, it's it's. <laughs> I sprung this one on you because we got through all the questions early. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. Now I gotta think. It's like because <laughs> I mean, on. Honestly, we've sat in the warehouse and like with all the people who do the D and D and the Pathfinder podcast that we have, we're like, let's do a fantasy draft of <laughs> who we would have as a GM, who we would take as players. I mean, so we've done, you know, if you had to pick, you know, so we've done that. I mean, but man, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question. Holy Is there um, I'll, 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 I, 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 you know what? I would probably say just because it's more of a storytelling system that's loosely based on dice rolls, I would probably go with fantasy flight game, Star Wars Ooh. or Genesis, whichever, but you know, I'm a big Star Wars nerd. So awesome. I would go with that because then you could get the people who could role play, role play it out. Um, and what what character would you want to play? Oh, I always I always go for the Jedi. I don't know why. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just drawn to it. I, I really am. I don't know why. So, uh, additional Space add-on Paladin. question: Space Wizard Paladin. I like it. <laughs> uh, and what dice set from Norse Foundry would you use? Well, they use their own dice system, where they have their own. Oh, they have their own sets. I yeah, it's 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 yet. it's got it's a symbol based. So, and you can't really recreate it because it's um disney so um but if i were to sit down and play let's i'll just say pathfinder just because um like i said the set i would use would be oh actually it it would be easy it would be my dwarven paladin using my holy smite set holy (laughs) smite set what does that look like uh it's uh base silver with uh like a uh, royal blue, like a Ooh. royal blue swirls. Okay. Yeah. Neat. And uh, is that uh, the the aluminum? Yeah. It's a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Most of most well, of my sets I use now are aluminum, just because I like the feel. It's a. That's fair. Yeah, it's a feel thing. Um. So where can we learn more about uh, all the latest Norse Foundry dice items, Kickstarters coming soon? NorseFoundry.com. <laughs> www.norsefoundry.com that's that'll the, get you everywhere you need to be yep that's that'll tell you everything you need to know awesome well we're getting close to the top of the hour so uh it was lovely talking to you and stealing all of your podcast recommendations <laughs> and hearing about the best uh dice sets to uh to to look at out there i'm every time i walk past those frosted glass ones i'm i'm just uh i'm just torn i have to like it's that it's that you you try to walk by and your head just kind of rubbernecks in that direction and then your body just stops after the fact. That's my reaction to those dice every time. I see oh yeah, it. it's funny. It's like when it cons, you can go, oh, I know what you're looking at. <laughs> I know exactly what you're looking at when you stop because that's <laughs> we put them out and you're like, yeah, that's that's the one you're looking at. Yep. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, <clears throat> brilliant strategy, and it works on me because I'm highly suggestible. <laughs> yeah, but if you um, ever want to be overwhelmed with yeah. <laughs> choices, go go to norsefoundry.com because there's there's plenty of choices there so excellent well thank you for everything you do um at the cons and for norse foundry and and um all the partnerships that you pursue through podcasting it's always great talking to you eric and i really appreciate you yeah thanks for having me on it was it was, it was fun awesome well stay tuned we'll be right back Up next is 10 Candles on the all new episode of the One Shot Show where the players will all die. They will not win. They will not defeat the monsters. Will they find meaning in their final few hours? Join us to find out coming up next.
And don't forget, we have a wonderful giveaway of a set of gnomish copper dice from Norse Foundry. Enter to win by typing hashtag RemPC in the chat. It's totally free. You can get additional entries to win by going to our donation page at www.remalternus.com slash nuyen or patreon.com slash remalternus. All donations help us to pay our cast and crew and keep producing content. And our biggest donors can have a message read at the end of the episode by the cast member of their choice. So check it out. And did you know we have more shows like Shadowrun Emerald Glitch on our Twitch channel? We stream five to six days a week over on twitch.tv slash master of rem, including the Dresden Files RPG, Shadowrun 5th edition, and more. So check us out and give us a follow. Thank you all for joining and we'll see you next time uh, where we are back with Shadowrun Emerald Glitch 6th edition and have a very special guest for role for Rules of Cool, Peter Adkisson. Anyone who is um, a fan of Gen Con TV won't want to miss that as he's the one that makes all of this possible. So thank you so much for joining and we'll see you next time. Bye, REM PCs.